The NWA returns to the historic Robarts Arena in Sarasota, Florida on Saturday, November 18th for NWA Power Tapings. The NWA, the longest running pro wrestling promotion, was a Sunshine State staple, especially with championship wrestling from Florida with the great Gordon Soley. Many top pro wrestling stars, whether they were newcomers at the time or rising up the ranks or veteran talent or stars, traveled I-75, I-95 up and down Florida for Eddie Graham's standout territory. One of those talents is currently with the latest version of the NWA, and he will be honored during the event on November 18th at Robarts Arena. Austin Idol, then known as Mike McCord too, wrestled twice at Robarts Arena in the 1970s, as noted by the Cage Match Wrestlers Database. Yes. Thank you, Austin Idol, the universal heartthrob. Austin, I just want to start here. Tell us about Mike McCord, the wrestler, back in the day. <laughs> I like that guy. He owes me money, too. If you ever hear from him, I want my money. Okay? I want my money, okay? Cash. Yeah, Mike McCord, uh, you know, boy, you know, you, that's, you, what an intro, by the way. That was just a great, you know, you, obviously you know you're wrestling. That's, that's very obvious. You just made it uh, crystal clear. But, uh, yeah, Mike McCord. He uh, he really he really started. Mike McCord really started in New York. That's when he became Iron Mike McCord in New York in 1973. Of course, I started in Florida. You know, when training was training, a little little different then than than it is now for sure. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't know how much you know about that, Jim. But you know, I was the first I was the first local kid to break into wrestling business in Tampa, Florida. Did you know that? I did not know that. And I'm glad you're bringing this up. My next this is great because my segue, my follow up was going to be about the training, about the grams, and you getting started. So yeah, no, I didn't know any of that. I knew you were from Tampa area, but I didn't know any of that. Yeah, well I was the first one and it, it took a, 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 quite a while to get the opportunity to get my foot in the door, and it was, uh, I will tell you, training. I don't think training really uh, defines it. It was really how much, how much can you take, kid, mentally and physically? How, mu how much, can, how, how badly do you want it? Because, I mean, when, I mean, the first, and Mike and I became very good friends, uh, Graham, and I was working out over at Mike and Eddie's house where Eddie had converted a double car garage into a gym. And we had a powerlifting team. And it was a great team. And we really had a blast. And we were really good at what we did. And I would lobby every once in a while to Mike Conley. I was working construction at the time. And I really didn't want to do that the rest of my life. And it was a hot Tampa scorching sun outside. I mean, not, not fun. And I would lobby every once in a while to Mike. I said, gosh, Mike, I get sure I do maybe get a, a tryout or maybe just, you know, be considered. And then, you know, I guess one day Mike said, hey, okay, you're going to go down to the sportatorium tonight and uh, we're going we're gonna to work out. He said, don't eat for about five hours beforehand. Just come over to my house and we'll, we'll ride down together. And when I went in there, that's where they taped the, the wrestling matches for Florida Championship Wrestling, 106 North Albany, as a matter of fact. Tampa, Florida. In the ring, I mean, I had little shorts on, gym, you know, cut off shirt, tennis shoes. But I mean, I knew. I mean, I knew this was going to be very. This was going to really be a test. I just didn't know how much of a test it would be. But when I we walked into where the ring was, in the ring is Jack Briscoe, mm -hmm. and you know Jack's background. I'm, I assume, right? Oh, NWA champion, tag team champion, him and Jerry are just legendary. Rock, Harley Race, Dory Funk Jr., that whole yeah, but lineage. You know, you know Jack's collegiate background. Oh, Oklahoma State. Go Cowboys. It, uh, yeah, him and his brother both were standout amateur wrestlers in college. Yeah. They were all Americans. Yes, I do know that. Uh, unbelievable. Jack was twice, twice NCAA heavyweight champion. That's huge. That's the pinnacle of the collegiate wrestling, of course, and he did it twice. And he wasn't a big guy, and he wasn't a large guy, though, too. 
He wasn't what? Oh, he wasn't a big guy. He wasn't a heavy power guy either. <laughs> don't, don't have to be. Don't have to be. But I knew Jack's background. So there's Jack Briscoe, larger than life. I knew his background. This guy is about as elite as it's going to get in, in terms of amateur wrestling. Then there was Bob Roop. Oh. And uh, you remember Big Bob. Big, Big Bob. U.S. Bob. U.S. Collegiate. Another standout collegiate wrestler. Team USA. Unbelievable. Yeah. I never knew you were a referee. I didn't know that history part of it. Wow. I, and, it's, yes. and it's funny. I can understand why Mike told you, don't eat five hours before. <laughs> he knew. You're going to be throwing up everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he knew. He knew. It was brutal. But it was the best, it was the best condition I've ever been in. Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I really got into tremendous condition. I really, really did. And I learned, I learned a lot about wrestling. That they don't teach in really in, in, in high schools. I mean, maybe even in colleges because these guys were these guys were hookers, not the type that work on the weekends or maybe. But they were hookers. I mean, they knew how to hook you and just make you scream. Or if, if they wanted you to pass out, they could do that: break a leg, break an arm, whatever they wanted to do. But these guys. They knew how to hurt people if they wanted to, but because I was Mike's friend, they weren't going to do that to me. They were just going to torture me. Well, they wanted to also, you, you had that who's who of talent in the ring, amateur and professional. Yeah. And it also, for you, it almost always saying, hey, this is a testament, not only a test, because Austin Idol, well, at the time, not Austin Idol, but still, Austin Idol. You're getting to learn. You're letting, getting to go through the rigor. They just didn't bring any anybody in there to work out with you. They brought the best of the best to work out with you. It's like, kid, if you could take it from us and you still want to do this, this this could be your thing. It could be. The, the, thing, the, the great thing now is, Jim, and, uh, you know, I have a professional wrestling college here in Greenville, South Carolina. Now, I, I don't I, – my, my number one thing is injury prevention. So I don't – Try to hurt people or make them feel uncommon. I, I teach them. Really, I teach them. I, really, my thing is to to teach them how to make money, yeah. how to make money, create 
create something that you may not even, more than likely, you don't even know that you have inside you. We'll dig in there and we'll find it, bring it out, nurture it, you know, we'll plant that seed, we'll water it, put fertilizer on it until you become somebody that's different from who you are and that you fall in love with who that is and you take that and build on it. And, I mean, wrestling, I mean, anything can happen. You can go from a nobody, I mean, an absolute nobody to somebody that the whole world knows. It's an, and make a lot of and make a lot of money and make a lot of money at it. And you you've been through it all, all the way back then till now. And who better to learn from and to learn the business of it as well and how to make money than you? So it's interesting. How long have you opened that? How long has that been running? About three years. And how's the reaction been from others? And are you getting? Are you getting kids in there, too, that are willing to work, willing to learn? Because nowadays, it just seems like everybody wants to be at the top right away. You know, yeah, I've got some, some people that are just tremendous. They're very smart, too. See, and that's, that's just, it's very important. you got to have a brain. you got to have an IQ about you. And I mean, the willingness to learn, for sure. But I've got some really smart young guys. One of them is going to be trying out. Maybe, maybe in Sarasota on November the 18th at Robarts, maybe trying out there. Uh, very well might have a tryout, yeah. And he's very athletic. You know, they're all great kids. I mean, they're, they're really smart, very athletic. And they, they, they've been taught and are continuing to be taught and coached about how to make money. Not, and not be a follower. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Be a contrarian. You know, don't follow what you're seeing. Don't do not do that. I mean, some things you're going to, obviously, you're going to use. I mean, different holes and moves, all that. But you got to be different. I mean, you gotta have a, you got to have a personality, yeah. a great one. Yeah. I mean, a great personality. you got to be able to get on that microphone and cut a promo. There's so much competition nowadays. And because also because of social media and just the way we can get the information so fast, we can get it on YouTube, we can get it on X, Twitter, we can get it on so Instagram, so many places, TikTok, that the competition is even greater to try to stand out. And I'm curious, please give another plug for the training center, the college, the, the facility that you're doing and where is it and do you have information if, if anyone's interested in checking it out? I sure do, Jim, and thank you for that. That's awfully kind of you. Yeah, it's a Universal Wrestling College. That's that's our website, Universal Wrestling College. I mean, you Google it, Austin Idol, you're going to see Universal Wrestling College, a great website. You can go on there and uh, sign up. You can just read everything. You see what it uh, entails. You can hit that sign up. Boom. There's an application. you got to fill out that app. You know, it's, it's not a real long deal, you know, but... Uh, you know, name, where you're from, what, yada, 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 age, and all that stuff, you know, any sports background. And you don't have to have a, what's cool in this business, you don't have to have a sports background. I mean, you might want to be a commentator. Uh, you know, somebody interviews, some, an interviewer, behind-the-scenes interviewer. There's a, you know, a referee. You know, you don't have to be a former college athlete or high school athlete to be a referee, but you got to be smart. So I can teach all aspects of the business. All of it. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina. It's a beautiful place, a tremendous facility at a fifteen thousand dollar ring. I mean, a gorgeous ring, beautiful ring. Well, I'm, I'm going to interject something here because there are pro wrestling schools, as we know. We we have some. We have one in Florida, South Florida. that's very good. Uh -huh. uh, Gangrel's involved with that. WWE alum, Coastal Championship Wrestling down here in, in Pompano Beach, actually, and. It's interesting because the wrestling schools, obviously, no one can guarantee what can happen with somebody. But yours is different in a sense. And what I hear is yours is saying, hey, how do you make money? Yes, how do you become a wrestler? How do you become a referee? How do you become a commentator? But how do you make money doing that? Hey, I think that's a, that's a really good caveat that you have set up for that. That's the name of the game. I mean, make money unless you just want to be seen on television. I want to make money. And, and aside from that, what really makes my wrestling college different, I absolutely have the keys to the National Wrestling Alliance, mm -hmm. the 
NWA. Yeah. Billy Corgan, owner, great guy, very smart, exceptionally smart, and we are tight. I've been with him now five years. Five years, when there weren't too many people on the roster, and I've been with Billy all that time. So we've become very close friends. He's a wonderful guy. He has amazing passion for wrestling, and he's he's the type of guy. Get out, just get out of his way. He doesn't want to push anybody around, but get out of his way, because once his mind is set, which it is set, he's going to make the NWA really, really big, and it's well on its way. I mean. A lot of great things are getting ready to happen very, very soon. Very soon with the NWA. Really cool things. But, you know, he's he's paid the price. He's kept grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. And it's getting ready to getting ready to come into fruition very soon. Yeah. Billy has great passion for it. He did that uh-huh. rock and wrestling tour, I, I, official name of it, but and it was here in West Palm Beach, Florida. I checked it out. Awesome event and all. I'm curious, Austin. Then, do you got Leonard Skinner and Smashing Pub, uh, Pumpkins on the playlist? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I saw I went to in Charlotte. Oh gosh, not too terribly long ago, a Pumpkins concert. And, uh, you know, Billy had invited me, and it was, it was amazing. I mean, they had thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and I was backstage. With, I mean, they were right there, you know, I could, right there in front of me playing, and the audience, thousands of people. What blew me away about it is these people knew every word of every song, and it was one song after another. And they knew all, the, I mean, it, it was like, wow. I don't know if it's a cult following, call what you want to, but these were pumpkin fans, they're big, big week pumpkin fans. And it, it was, I mean, it was so exciting, really exciting to watch it all go down. Right in front of me, yeah, it was cool. And what's cool too is, it reminds me, different music, I know, but it reminds me of Grateful Dead. In the sense of the fans. The Grateful Deadheads, they just love that they'll go anywhere for them and they know all the songs and everything. Same thing with the Pumpkins these days. It was amazing. Yeah, me too. When I was in Palm Beach, I was like, holy, wow, look at all these people. And it was and it was different ages too. I was amazed by that as well. It is amazing. I mean, you look at uh, uh, Jimmy Buffett just passed away. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like... Yeah, like Buffett too. He's got an allegiance too. God rest his soul. But yes... And all Margaritaville and that whole Jimmy Buffett, it, a different type of music. But as far as the, the fans, the allegiance of fans, they know all the songs. They travel to go see him in concert. Yeah, it's, you're right. Same type of thing with the Smashing Pumpkins. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. And they're hot. They're red, scorching hot. Yeah. I mean, they're still hot. I mean, that's a, it, I mean it, this guy works. I mean, he, he works. He's a nonstop worker. How he juggles all the balls without dropping one, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. But just another level of it's another level of brilliance. I can't relate to that. And he loves it. I mean, he loves the music and he loves the pro wrestling. You could tell. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> well, you and I probably would be having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you a little bit back, and it's so cool because you start in New York, but then you came back to Florida. And you got a chance here to wrestle because you said you started as a referee. Hey, when you started as a referee, though, that was in Florida, yes? Yes. Okay, so you start referee, and then you got a shot in New York. You became Iron Mike McCord, as you told me. I went, wait, time out. I yeah. Went from, I, I, time, I went from Florida to Tennessee for Nick Goulas. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, yeah, I starved to death for about um, four or five weeks. But prior to leaving Tampa on a, a Tuesday night, I, I went down to this, uh, the Armory where they had wrestling matches. Jerry Briscoe was in town uh, to wrestle with his brother Jack as a tag team. And, uh, of course, Jack and I became friends, really super tight friends, because, you know, he knew that, you know, I got, I got punished, you know, mm-hmm. physically and mentally, but I, I stuck it out. And he respected that big, big time. He was a phenomenal guy, a great guy. When, when I mentioned that I'm leaving tomorrow to go to Nashville for the Nick Goulas, well, Jerry knew, you're going to starve to death. I thought I was on a $300 a week guarantee. Well, that didn't happen. But Jerry gave me his phone number. He said, if you ever need anything, call me. And uh, I was in Tennessee making about $160 a week, six nights a week, starving, starving. And uh, I had little, hardly had any money in anyway, Jim. So, I mean, I was really almost tapped out. And I 
call Jerry. So, well, let me call. Let me talk to Old Man Crockett. See if I can get you in. And I, I called Jerry the next day. He said, "Okay, you're booked." I mean, like, like immediately. Wow. And I had no, I had no place to live and no money. And Jerry said, "Come live with me." And Jerry was a champion at the time, making very good money, very good money. And I lived Jerry's. Jerry had a really tremendous apartment, really big. I lived with Jerry for a while, and uh, I think my first week in Charlotte, like just under, underneath guy, rightfully so. I think my first check was like four hundred bucks. Wow. Four forty. I just jumped from one sixty. At that time, that's amazing and all. So you didn't have you didn't have to eat pork and beans anymore. No, and then <laughs> I got a lucky break when I was there. Someone's father, uh, my mother, got, became ill, and they had to go to Canada, and they uh, behind closed doors, they just said, "Well, put that kid with a with him, you know, as a, as his partner." And uh, that first week going around the territory, I got my check was seven eighty. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's right awesome. place, right time, right attitude. Yeah, right attitude is right. Right attitude will get a person far. I don't care if it's back then. I don't care if it's now. The right attitude will get somebody. It'll it'll give them doors open. It can. And and you mentioned Jerry Briscoe. What an awesome guy. I, that is one of the best of the best. I'm so glad you told that story because he is just so giving and is so great and so funny too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love Jerry. He's a Gerald. I'm gonna call him Jerry. Gerald. Gerald, Jerry, I, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, boy, wow. All right, so I got I got to ask you a couple things here. Now, I'm not. Listen, ah, uh, you, you, you're the universal heartthrob. You're Austin Idol. You've had matches. You've won titles. So I'm not gonna say, oh, do you remember this one? Do you remember that one? But I am gonna just share a little history. And if you remember the the wrestler themselves, and if you have anything to share, and it's it's two matches because. Robarts Arena. So I'm looking back. I don't know. And I find two matches. Mike McCord, February 15th, 1975 at Robarts Arena in Sarasota against Bullet Bob Armstrong. <laughs> Do you remember anything about Bullet Bob? And what a great family, too, the Armstrongs. Tremendous family. Yeah, tremendous family. I knew them all very, very well. Yeah, Bob, Bob was, uh, he was a great guy. And he, he really... And Bob was the guy that he knew. He knew how to make money. He knew how to make money. And I knew how to make money. I just came from New York. I mean, that was a, really the cream of the crop. And before New York, I was in Australia. Wow. Oh, I was in Australia. With, you just didn't get into Australia. Wow. I got, I got lucky. Gary Hart got me booked there. And, I mean, that was like unbelievable. It's they, unbelievable. They saw something in you. Come on. I mean, even back then, though. We know what we see later, but back then. Because you got Jerry Briscoe sticking up for you. You got Gary Hart sticking up for you. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, it's, you know we're building relationships. And we're always building relationships and making new friends and acquaintances, whatever. And uh, But, yeah, you have to have, bring something to the table for sure. But, uh, I mean, I went from Australia where Jim Barnett sold that company and uh, uh, he, he said to me on the telephone, he says, well, well, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? I said, I don't know. He said, where do you want to go? I said, New York. He said, I'll call Vince. Man. Call me in three or four days. I'll be at the Surfrider Hotel in Hawaii. Wow. Look, your first TV's in March, whatever, 73, I guess it was. And then I went there to New York and uh, get old man, you know, Vince McMahon Sr. Yeah. Tremendous guy, wonderful guy. After about, I don't know, five or six weeks, he put me with Lou Albano to be my manager. And Lou Albano was one of the greatest managers of all time. Captain Lou. The guiding light. Man, that's, this is so cool. I'm so glad you're sharing some of these stories. You don't know, as a, as a old school pro wrestling fan, how, how I am enjoying this. <laughs> I really am. And, and just to hear that, you, you work New York and you're working with Captain Lou. Right then and there, you know after a while, you're set. I mean, you're, you're set. I mean, who knows what's going to happen five years, ten years from now. Who knows? I know that. But as far as, like, getting that opportunity and doing that, did you know at the time in your head, though, that, like, okay, this is big time. I'm here. I'm on my way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just getting to New York. Yeah. Just getting, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure... Not 100%, but I'm pretty 
pretty sure I'm the first guy from the South that ever went to New York. Wow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was the yeah. first one. Because there, there wasn't anybody there from the South. No. Or from there, no, nobody. No, they were all Northern, right, Northeastern. They were all Canada, Northeastern. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So, so here comes this kid from the South, and then he puts me to Lou Albano, who was one of the great, great, I mean, talk about mic skills, promo. Oh. And, uh, yo, bro, I got to be a student because, you know, I would stand behind Lou or next to him. Lou's doing all the talking, and I'm just soaking it in. So, you know what? He's basically, not, not completely, but basically talking about everything but wrestling. <laughs> so, this guy's a shotgun blast. And then he'll make his point. You know what I mean? That when, when wrapping it up, he'll make his point then. And I thought, well, this is tremendous. He's not even talking about wrestling. He's talking about anything and everything but wrestling. Then he, then he drives his point home. So I was with him for a year. And then, but finally, after a while, Lou started letting me talk. He just said, you talk. Tell him, tell him, Mike. Tell him, Mike. Tell him, Iron Mike. And, and I started, that's really where I started grinding my teeth on making promos. And that, I mean, that was, that was tremendous uh, learning experience for me. Well, Austin, obviously Bruno San Martino time, yes? Well, yeah, uh, no. No. Yes. Was it Superstar? Because then I was going to ask you about Superstar Billy Graham, of course. Was Superstar the, uh, there at that time or no? No, he wasn't there. No, he wasn't, he wasn't even there yet, no. But Bruno had retired, uh, and he would come in and make shots here and there. Matter of fact, I wrestled Bruno in, I think it was Providence, Rhode Island mm. one night. I mean, that, that was a thrill. Wow. Bruno, Bruno San Martino? <laughs> you kidding? You kidding? <laughs> that it was really a good match, and he was just like, you know, larger than life, you know? Uh, wrestled Pe Pedro was the champion, Pedro Morales. Wrestled Pedro a few times for the belt uh, here and there. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was rocking. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you did all that, and you mentioned uh, Pedro Morales, because, yes, that would have been, I, I know now, that would have been the time short-lived. Uh, Ivan Koloff was champion, ended Bruno's streak. Then he had the injury from the Lariat, Stan Hansen who I wish he wore contacts back in the day, but what are you going to do? And then right. you got Pedro Morales as a champion, and then and Bob Backlund ended up becoming a champion, superstar Billy Graham, okay, et cetera, et cetera. But back to Florida, I'm curious, because there was one other match at Robarts Arena that I found. And by the way, we're not going to tell the outcome of the what happened with Bullet Bob Armstrong. I'm not going to reveal that. Not, no Don Jardine alerts. I'm not going to reveal that. But I will say this. You beat on July 9th, 1977. And I don't know if you remember this guy, if you have anything you can share about him. Mike McCord defeats at Robarts Arena the Great Mephisto. Oh, man, oh, man. Great Mephisto, Frankie Kane. Yeah, he, Frankie Kane was an amazing individual. He wasn't a big guy. You know, kind of shortened, but, but Frankie was as tough as nails. I mean, he was tough, extremely intelligent, very, very smart. And he was a guy that you would want to have as your friend. I mean, really. And we became close friends. But Frankie was a one tough mother. And, and well, matter of fact, he was, he was a big star out in... Uh, San Francisco for Roy Shire. Roy yeah. Shire was the promoter. Wow. Frankie was, Frankie was on top. Cow Palace. Wow. Yeah, Cow Palace, Pat Patterson. Yeah, Pat was, Patterson. I mean, you know, they, they, was, they, they had a stacked roster. It was stacked. And Frankie was on top out there. And I, don't, I really don't know what happened, but something happened. And Frankie and Roy Shire got into an argument. And this guy's the promoter. Mm. He's writing the checks. Frankie punched him right in the face. Ah. He punched him right in the nose. Well, that was the end of Frankie there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, that's the kind of guy he was. I mean, he just, he wasn't going to take any, any, any guff. I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't going to take it. But he, uh, he was an amazing guy. Truly amazing. And very smart. Very smart. Well, on that night, Mike McCord was a little smarter. And he got the victory over the great Mephisto. <laughs> yeah, I got a little lucky. <laughs> So here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying, Austin Idol. 
NWA is going to be in Sarasota, Florida at that historic Robarts Arena on Saturday, November 18th for NWA Power Tapings. I only found two matches that you had at Robarts Arena. I'm saying get in there in a six-man, maybe an eight-man. You don't have to do much, but you get in there, you get a victory, and now you're over the 500 mark, and there you go. You're done at Robarts Arena with a winning record. That's what I'm saying. Okay, we're going to keep We're going to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm think about it. We'll put that in the old think tank. I'm, but, you know, I'm excited to be back there because it's like in that whole area, it's my old stomping ground. Yeah, it is. It is. Started 50 miles. What, what Sarasota is, what, 50, 60 miles to Tampa? That's it. Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, I, mean, I, I can go playing baseball down in Sarasota. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, playing baseball. High school baseball. You go to Sarasota, they always had great baseball teams. Did you, have, were, you play, were you a high school baseball player? Where, my, Austin, where did you go to high school? If you don't mind me asking. Robinson. Robinson, Tampa Robinson. I was going to say Chamberlain, but so I, I'm glad I didn't say that. So you were Robinson. Wow. That, that's great. Because Tampa, like South Florida down here, great baseball in Tampa. Great baseball in Tampa for the kids. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're outside all year long, you know, because yeah. of the weather. Yeah. We, 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 it's a breeding ground. It's a total breeding ground. Yeah. Well, then, did you become a Yankees fan or no? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, who did you ever go to favorite player or no? You go to where? Did you ever go to favorite player growing up? Favorite, favorite, did I have a favorite player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mickey Mantle. Ah, number seven. Ah, of course. Yeah, that'd be Mickey Mantle, one of the greatest of all time. That's amazing. Yeah, okay. That's and then, and then Steinbrenner ended up having his whole training center. I mean, it was later, later, because he used to train. They used to train down here in Fort Lauderdale for spring training all a long time. Then he built his own place and went to Tampa and had the yeah. uh, training, uh, the minor league team, the single A ball club, and and the Yankees major league spring training there in Tampa as well. Mike, I didn't know you were a baseball guy. That do you still follow baseball or no? Not as much. I mean, because the, the games change so dramatically. I mean, now they're every you're on the clock. You know, you, you shorten the game. I mean, it, it's just changed so much. Yeah. So I don't follow it like I used to, you know. Plus, my team, they, they haven't done squat in so long, Yankees. I mean, they just, but big payroll. Yeah. They, 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 Cashman is their GM. Good guy. Hey, he's done a lot for them, but I think it's time for a change. We'll see. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a big Yankee. So I like the Marlins. They're my team down here. But still, it's, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, they do spend a lot of money. A lot of these teams spend a lot of money, and it's not working out for them now. Now the teams that aren't spending a lot and they're just doing it with analytics and smarter, although I don't like all the analytics. I think it takes away some from the reality of the game, the truism of the game. But but anyway, I mean, that's you know what's so cool, though, too, Austin? The only other, there may be more, but the only other ball player I knew that made it big in pro wrestling was Randy Macho Man Savage. Yeah, Randy's a... Uh... Tremendous. I mean, uh, and he was a Sarasota. He was in Sarasota for a while too p with the baseball. If I remember, my, if I get my story right. Yeah, he was a great athlete, you know. And you know, Randy had injured his. Uh, I think it was his right arm. And he and he learned to throw with the other arm. I read that. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that tells you what kind of athlete this guy was. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he was unreal. I mean, he really was, and he. I got along really well with Randy. That is so cool. Did you remember? I know. Listen, I know. It's so long and stuff like that. Do you remember even, uh, not exactly what, but you ever talk baseball with him? Do you recall or no? A little bit, yeah. A little bit with Randy, yeah. Absolutely. Talked a lot of baseball with Bobby Heenan. Bobby's a big baseball player. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bobby loved baseball. Wow. I know some of the guys, you know, some of the guys now I know that love the game and all, but back then I didn't know who was like really a big follower of the game and all. That's, that's interesting too. And he was, yeah. Bobby was a Midwest guy. Am I wrong or right about that? I think, right? Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. I, I think he, maybe Milwaukee Brewers or, or something. I don't know who would be back then. I'm thinking maybe Chicago Cubs, White Sox. I'm just thinking the area. Maybe, maybe that was his team or maybe not. I don't know. I'll just go to the areas, but that's interesting with Heenan. <laughs> And that's another great, what a great promo guy. When you think of great promos, Heenan's right up there with the best of them. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's some good ones. There was some good ones, and there's still some good ones out there now, I would imagine. I would imagine. I mean, 
not as good as I am. But <laughs> who could top the universal heartthrob? That's exactly right. Come on now. <laughs> it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, Jim. It's it really is. You do cut. Your promos were tremendous. I'm just wondering. Obviously, I know it's you. I know it's your own. But are you are you pulling from others too? Because you you're looking at others. Cause obviously, there's comparisons to superstar Billy Graham a little bit. You worked in Florida. Dusty was in Florida. Or, or did you did you sort of pull from others and then throw your own style into it? Or am I off on that? I, no, I think everybody does that a little bit. You may see something or hear something. Say, yeah, I kind of like that, you know. Or it could be a move. It could be a, something that somebody said, you know, and say, I like that. But you got to think for yourself. I mean, yeah. it's critical. You have to think for yourself. So, uh, you know, I'm, I created my own thing. I mean, I really, really did. And as far as the promos go, I mean, I stood there with Lou Albano for a year. Oh. The shotgun blast. I mean, the shotgun blast. So, I mean, I've had a lot of guys. I mean, The Rock even said, I don't know, somewhere, quite some time ago, said, yeah, I used to watch Austin Idol's promos. Oh, that's awesome. Because talk about someone else who was just amazing on the microphone. And for him to say that, that's another feather in the cap. Jeez. I did. I gave Paul Heyman his first break. Oh, get out of here. That's amazing. Another one great on Mike. What, real quick, what happened there? Real quick. I love Heyman. I was in Memphis. I was in Memphis. I'm doing well because I was on top, you know, with, you know, wrestling against Jerry Law or mm -hmm. with him. So, I mean, I had a really great run in, in the Memphis area for really about on and off for about 10 years. Tremendous run. About 10 years. And this kid came in from New York and had his little white suit on and walked around with a phone. Back then, they had, had antennas on. It was Three feet long. <laughs> yeah, those Gordon Gecko Wall Street phones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he was from New he was from New York, so we talked New York talk and talked baseball and we just kinda hit it off and I liked him. He was brash and he was smart and all that. And I, and I, I went to uh, I went to Lawler and said, uh, you know, I like this kid. It was Paul Dan going wrestling uh, managing under Paul dangerously. Yeah. I said, you know, I like this kid. So let's put him with me. I will make him my manager. She said, Lawler said, Are you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, because I like him, right? So I wanted to kind of help him out and maybe enhance him a little bit and get him up the ladder a little bit more. I said, yeah, let me have him. Let me have him. And Paul was right there with me, and, you know, he heard me, watched me make my promos, and obviously he knew that, oh, this is good. I can do this. And he's smart, though. He's a smart guy. Yeah, know? he is very smart, yes. So he would be very, he, would, he wouldn't hesitate to say, yeah, I learned a lot from Idol. That's he, wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't blink. He would, he would admit it in a heartbeat. Somewhere. That is amazing. That is so so cool. I love the history, and, it, and it's so cool. And I think another Yankees fan. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Another suffering Yankees fan. <laughs> well, Austin, I, I, you, you're so great for your time. I have a couple more questions, and I'll let you go. I thank you so much.